In 2017, if someone asked you about Iowa State football, you more than likely would not know much about them and assume they were at the bottom of the Big 12. That's because, for the most part, Iowa State football has been pretty irrelevant in its history. If you would have asked someone in 2020, then they would have told you they were playing for the Big 12 championship, had one of the best quarterback running back duos in all of college football, had one of the top young coaches in college football, and was a program on the rise. Unfortunately, Iowa State right now is stuck somewhere in the middle. They're no longer irrelevant, but they're not living up to the same kind of hype they had just a couple of years ago. This year was largely disappointing, and Iowa State fans are starting to get upset because after tasting success, they're starting to slowly go back to their losing ways. In today's video, I want to talk about the current state of Iowa State football, go through how this season went, what in my opinion went wrong, my future outlook for them, and my thoughts on them moving forwards. But before we get started, we're so close to 100k, so be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a like if you want to support today's video, turn on notifications so you never miss when I upload, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover next. Now, let's get started and talk about Iowa State football. To give you a brief history lesson, Iowa State was founded in 1858 in Ames, Iowa, and claimed to be the first land-grant college in America. As they would progress throughout the decades, they eventually fielded their first official football team in 1892, but despite their long history, have only played in 16 total bowl games in which they have a 5-11 record. The nickname Cyclones goes back all the way to 1895, as they were first nicknamed the Cardinals before they had a memorable game against Northwestern. Apparently, there was an active tornado in the area, and since they beat Northwestern 36-0, a local newspaper said that the Wildcats were hit by a cyclone and it stuck from there. Their rivals include Missouri, Iowa, and Kansas State, and for the most part, they've been pretty irrelevant except for the Dan McCarney and Matt Campbell eras. Guys such as Alan Lazard, Brock Purdy, Hakeem Butler, and Seneca Wallace are notable names, but Iowa State has mainly had a history with good running backs. Troy Davis is by far the greatest Iowa State football player of all time, as he was the first person to ever rush for 2,000 yards in consecutive seasons, and was a Heisman finalist in each of those two years, despite playing on a team that had pretty much no success outside of him. Besides him, they've had some other guys, but it's recently ramped up, with players such as David Montgomery, Brees Hall, Kine Nwangu, and Jairo Brock, as they have since become Cyclone stars at the running back spot. Going back to this century, Iowa State was decent in the early 2000s, as they made five bowl games in the first six years before McCarney would eventually resign, opening the job for Gene Chizik. He ended up winning five games in two years there before he left for Auburn. Looking back, I don't know how he got hired to Auburn. After that, Paul Rhodes would come in, and he was there from 2009 to 2015, where he had one total winning season and three total bowl appearances. He was eventually fired, and Iowa State was facing an uphill battle. This was a program that had not won more than eight games since the year 2000, and whatever coach was there was going to need to be special, and that is what they would end up getting. Matt Campbell obviously coached at Toledo, and what's really interesting is back in the day, he was named the worst hire of the year when he took over for the Rockets. Before then, he played at Mount Union, but he quickly rose up the coaching ladder and then went off for the Rockets. He did not produce a single losing season in his time there, won seven or more games in each of his four years, and had three nine-win campaigns. He also went 2-1 in bowl games and helped upset Arkansas on the road, which is a game that many college football fans remember. At the time, Campbell was obviously seen as a big-time coach, but he was going to go to a lower-level school. For a while, it looked like he was going to go to Mizzou, but Maryland and Virginia Tech fans also made the case for him to be a hire for them. Eventually, he decided to settle on what was said to be the worst job, and that was Iowa State. The Cyclones administration would end up striking gold, as Campbell has been insane there. Year one for Campbell had its growing pains and was not all sunshine and rainbows. The team ended up going 3-9, and nine, had a loss at home to Northern Iowa, and for the most part, were non-competitive in almost every conference game. Going into year two, quietly, the Cyclones could make some noise in 2017, but no one expected this to happen especially after the start. The team started at 2-1 with wins over Northern Iowa and Akron, and only lost by 3 in overtime to Iowa. Things were looking really promising for them, but then they got beat 17-7 against Texas, and in that game, Jacob Park would be lost for the remainder of the season. This gave way for Kyle Kemp to take over as the starter, and from there, Iowa State would pull off some miracles. They went on the road and beat number 3 Oklahoma 38-31, shut out Kansas at home, went on the road and beat Texas Tech, and jumped into the polls for the first time in forever. At number 25, they had a chance to spoil another team season as number 4 TCU came in, and in this game, Iowa State won a defensive battle and punctuated the win with a late interception, winning 14-7, storming the field, and gaining enormous hype for Iowa State. 
They jump up at number 15 in the polls, but after that, they lose back-to-back -back close games to West Virginia and Oklahoma State before they would beat Baylor and then lose on a last second play to Kansas State. The Cyclones ended up going eight and five, had a couple of major upsets, and then beat Memphis in the Liberty Bowl. It was an extremely successful season, and Iowa State was ready to take off from here. Despite a strong finish to 2017, many experts predicted Iowa State to go back to normal as they were picked to finish 7th in the Big 12 in 2018. For a while, it looked like they were going to be correct. They lost to Iowa in Week 1, got beat by Oklahoma in Week 2, and lost to TCU on the road in Week 4. The Cyclones started up 1-3, and three, but then, led by David Montgomery and freshman quarterback Brock Purdy, they would go off. They'd upset number 25 Oklahoma State, beat number 6 West Virginia at home, and then win conference games against Texas Tech, Kansas, and Baylor before entering back into the polls. Their only loss in the back half of the season came to Texas, and they would finish the season with wins over K-State and Drake. The Cyclones went 8-4, where they eventually lost to Washington State in the Alamo Bowl. 2019 would be pretty similar, as they started at the season ranked number 21, but then fell off. They unfortunately lost at home at number 19, Iowa, and entered the polls at three different times. Their best win came at home against number 19, Texas, and they finished the regular season at 7-5, before they got blown out in the Camping World Bowl against number 15, Notre Dame. Despite the tough end of the season, Iowa State had a considerable amount of hype going into 2020. Their main pieces were back, and this is when Iowa State would go into the stratosphere. Somehow they lost their week one game against Louisiana, but then they would go off. They would beat TCU, take care of Oklahoma, and then beat Texas Tech before they lost in a thriller to Oklahoma State. They didn't end up giving up though, as they'd win their next five games, getting themselves to the Big 12 championship game. They would rematch against number 10 Oklahoma, and after being outmatched in the beginning, they would make the game interesting at the end, eventually losing 27 to 21. They were placed in the Fiesta Bowl against number 25 Oregon, and they won that game 34 to 17. Despite it being a weird and somewhat fluky year, Iowa State football had reached the Big 12 championship, had a couple of stars on the roster, and now Matt Campbell was in danger of getting poached by an NFL team or a bigger program. Ultimately, he decided to stay, as Iowa State had playoff hype for 2021. 2021 was going to be the most talented team in Iowa State history. You had Brock Purdy at quarterback, Brees Hall at running back, Xavier Hutchinson at receiver, Charlie Kohler at tight end, an experienced offensive line, and a defense littered with talent. That's why they started out ranked number seven in the country, and some predicted they were going to be a playoff team. After an underwhelming 16 to 10 win against Northern Iowa in week one, people were skeptical. They'd end up moving down, and in what was an extremely strange game against Iowa, they lost 27 to 17, and Purdy was benched. After that, they'd go on the road and beat UNLV before they were officially knocked out of the playoff hunt with a road loss to Baylor. Baylor ended up being the Cinderella team of 2021, and Iowa State ended up not really doing much. They beat Kansas, Kansas State, Texas, and TCU, and had their most notable victory over number eight Oklahoma State, but they also lost to West Virginia, Texas Tech, and Oklahoma, and they would end up finishing with a seven and five record. From there, they were invited to play in the Cheez It Bowl against number 19 Clemson. Clemson ended up winning 20 to 13, and a disappointing 2021 campaign was now over. Going into 2022, a lot of those star players were gone, and they would have to pick up the pieces and build from scratch. Now we're going to talk about this season and what has gone wrong. At quarterback, the Cyclones would look to Hunter Deckers, who was a blue chip recruit and one of the top high school quarterbacks in Iowa football history. They had three or four guys try to step up at running back, and then Xavier Hutchinson also went off this year. To be honest, the stats were pretty underwhelming for Iowa State, and that is the major reason why this team was not any good. After beating SEMO in Iowa in Weeks 1 and Week 3, their only decent win of the entire season came in Week 2 against Iowa, and in that game, they won 10-7. Iowa State would start out 3-0, but then the losing would begin. They would lose five straight games, four of which came by one possession, one point against K-State, three against Kansas, three against Texas, and seven against Baylor. They also even kept it close against Oklahoma. They had now dropped a 3-5 with an 0-5 mark in the Big 12 before they get their first and final win of the season against West Virginia. After that, they go on the road and lose by one possession against Oklahoma State and then had a four-point loss to Texas Tech. At this point, the team was just completely deflated as they got blown out 62-14 against TCU in the final week and the Cyclones finished with a 4-8 record with a 1-8 mark in the Big 12 finishing dead last. Hunter Deckers for the most part was disappointing, the running back room was not great, and despite having one of the best defenses in the country, they just couldn't make plays to win. Either they were unlucky or they had a culture problem. No team loses that many games by one possession, 
and doesn't have a culture problem. It pretty much reminds me of the 2021 Nebraska team, and right now, some Iowa State fans are panicking, while in my eyes, I'm still optimistic. I think Matt Campbell is a tremendous coach with the proper coaches in place, and I think now that they're going under the radar again, Campbell is going to thrive. This past season, Iowa State was not a bad team. They were only blown out in one game, and if you technically flip some of these scores, they were competitive in 11 of their 12 matchups. Unfortunately though, good teams win. But to be honest, looking forward, I think the Cyclones program is in a fine spot. And as I said earlier, them being under the radar I also think helps, and I expect them to bounce back in 2023. Yes, the honeymoon phase for Matt Campbell is over, but Iowa State in my eyes is still in a good spot. But what do you guys think? If you're an Iowa State fan, what do you think of the current program? What went wrong this season? And what are your thoughts about the future? Be sure to let me know down below. Let me know what team, player, topic, or situation I can cover next. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.